Video two, how to carry out a statistical analysis. So we need to do four things when we carry out a statistical analysis. We need to pose a question first of all. So we need to ask a question that we want answered. We then need to collect some data on that question or that information. Um, we want to analyze the data and usually that's used, we use some graphs, so some uh, images and stuff like that. We also use numbers, um, numbers that tell us the spread of the data and numbers that give us kind of um, a single uh, value to represent the data. And then we want to interpret the results and use them in some sort of way. Now, after we interpret the results, we may go back to pose a different question or to pose a new question because we might need more information. So we're going to do um, a dummy statistical analysis. We're going to pretend that um, we've got a business in CBC and we want to sell woolly hats. So woolly hats um, to the people in CBC. So we first need to pose a question. So what are we trying to find out when we pose a question is something that's going to be really important. We want to find out can the question be answered? What will we, we be measuring in this case? And we'll be measuring the number of hats sold or the number of people who are interested in uh, buying hats actually. And what problems will we foresee? So we're selling woolly hats. What are we trying to find out? Well, the question I'm going to ask is how many people are going skiing for the winter? Because I know people that are going skiing will buy my woolly hats and um, that will determine uh, the number that I'm going to buy. Now, you, you probably notice here that my question isn't great, but it starts me off on the right path. So remember that that circle there is actually a cycle. So I've asked a question that isn't really relevant, but it will give me an idea. And after I get all the information, I might go back and refine my question. I might then say, how many people need a woolly hat because they get cold in the winter? How many people are uh, in need of a woolly hat? Or I might say, um, how many people know people in their family that would buy a woolly hat with CBC logo on it? So let's get back to my um, first question. What are we going to find out? Well, how many people can we sell uh, CBC hats to? Can the question be answered? Yes. And we're going to answer it within CBC. What will we be measuring? Number of hats and sizes. And the problems we foresee is you have a lot of people to survey and analyse the data. And that question may not be the greatest question. So when we're posing a question, we need to, first of all, assess our question according to those. I'm going to plow on with that question, even though I don't think it's great. All right. So how do we collect the data then? Or actually, when we're looking to collect the data, there are a few things we need to worry about first. Do we ask everyone in the school? Or do we ask just a selection of students in each class uh, for each year? Now, if we ask everyone in the school, that's referred to as the population. So it's the population of the school. Or if we just ask a selection, we call that a sample size. And obviously the sample size is smaller than the population and it will be quicker to collect the data there. The only problem is it's not going to reflect everybody, but it would give us a starting point or a guide um, in terms of how many hats we might need to get manufactured. Okay, how do we collect the data? All right, we'll have a look at that. And how will we display the data afterwards, which will be more in the analyzing uh, phase? So let's have a look at our questions. So do we look at the population or sample size? That's a decision you, you need to make. And it will be dependent on a number of factors. Uh, I'm sure you can come up with those yourselves. So how do we collect the data? So how do we collect the data? Do we go class to class and just look for a show of hands? Do you hand out a written survey and get everyone to fill it in? Do you do it online? And if you decide either of those methods, you need to ask yourself um, what are the benefits of those and what are the downsides of those? For example, if you asked people to fill in a form online and you said, take this down in your journal, go home, access this and fill in the form. Realistically, how many people are going to do that? Right? And it's been shown that it's about 1%. So that means in a school of 900, nine people will probably fill in the form online. It might be, make more sense for you to have a team of four or five people. You go to each uh, class and you just get a show of hands and you just tally up or tick off or give a number of how many people might be interested in the class. All right, last question. How will we display the data? And the data there being displayed in different forms is so we can see a pattern. And if we see a pattern, then we're able to interpret the data a bit more effectively. Maybe not in the case of the collection of hats, but certainly in the in the case of the, the, the examples I gave you in the previous video. All right, let's look at interpreting the results. So a few things we need to worry about there. How will the data be displayed? What numerical calculations will we be using to see the trends? And then 
with those methods, which one are suitable for what we want. So let's have a look at each of them. How will the data be displayed? So what types of graphs will we use? And we'll see later on that there are a few different graphs. Now the numerical methods um, are usually an average, or a type of average, and a spread of the data. So, uh, and finally, we're going to look at interpreting the data. So when you're interpreting data, you have to ask yourself, what is the data saying? What are we going to do with the information? And let's have a look at these. And the interpretation is the most important uh, section because when you interpret the data, you get to make a decision based on it. And that decision then will allow you to make an informed decision rather than just a guess. OK, so what's the data saying? For us, which, which years are likely to buy one or multiple hats? So you might break up the data and it might be uh, per year. So you might see in first year, everyone is really enthusiastic. And out of 120 students, 100 will go away and buy the hat. In second and third year, they think they're too cool. So they don't want to have a CBC logo on a hat. So you might get six guys will buy it. And then uh, as we get to fifth and sixth year, you might get guys that are thinking, OK, I'm going to college. Uh, I'd like to have a hat with CBC on it so that other CBC students in college can can identify me and say, oh, yeah, 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 you went to CBC too, I make more friends. So maybe they'll they'll buy um, hats as well. So out of a class of 120, you might have 80 of those buying it. But that's important as well, because as you get older, you get bigger, sizes increase. So it will determine how many hat sizes you're going to buy as well. And then what we're going to do with that information, it'll determine how many hats and what sizes we buy. So that's video two done.